Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Conference League for Bolsonaro, the Green Army. Open your eyes, hit like, share, subscribe, and see. We're just a poor club with poor facilities because we're only semi pro. Little wage, little dough. Send us where the beer flows. For Guinness after our victory. Victory. Good luck with editing, Sean. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 24 of Pacific Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well today. We do enter the Conference League as you possibly could have been able to tell from that intro. You might have been also able to tell we're taking on a team called Bohemian as well as that we have also done some transfers now that we have gone past the 30th of June. Grabbed a few players from the top five leagues or the top five nations. I should say, who have joined the club, albeit some of them aren't going to be playing in the Conference League. We'll get onto that shortly. So a big episode today. We've got two games. If you're looking forward to it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. But the main focus of today, we are taking on Bohemian in the first qualifying round of the conference league this is the round that we absolutely need to win if we are going to meet the board's objectives for this competition they are currently top of the irish league it's going to be an interesting test our first test in european football in this save but before we do get into that we are going to quickly run through some transfers that we have done since the end of yesterday's episode where we did have a top of the table clash against viking so if you missed that one then i will leave a link to that above my head in the top right corner, but if we do make our way over to transfer history, we will sort this out by date, and you will be able to see quite a bit of action around the end of June. You can see that we have bought in six new faces, and a few players have also left up since the transfer window opened as well. The most notable of those, the player who we did get the biggest fee for was Ottobong Effiong. He has gone back to Africa for £3,500, but got rid of some players who weren't really getting first team football this year. Probably the most notable of those in terms of first team minutes is actually Edward Zevnarov. He has gone to Gamal, just not really getting into the first team this season, so he has left us. But a few players have left us, but we have strengthened thanks to the top five nations in Europe. Contracts have expired for players in those nations, and we have got a few of the younger ones in on trial, and they have joined us. First off, we got a young 17-year-old. He's currently going to be living in the under-19s, but his very good potential does Benjamin, the 17-year-old Spanish winger, could be a good potential option for us in this save in the future, especially once he does gain Icelandic nationality at some stage, so a good young pickup for us there. Off the back of that, we got another defensive midfield option. I do feel that's our weakest area. Lillamos is doing a good job for us in that CDM role, but Noam Bonet can hopefully provide a good bit of competition for him in that defensive midfield role, the 21-year-old Frenchman joining us on an amateur contract, having previously been at Lyon. Next up, a very good centre-back who has come here from Italy, and that is Gabriel Corbo, 23 years old, very well-rounded, could probably play as a ball-playing defender, so that's something interesting. We might have to develop our tactics at the end of the season, but a very good centre-back here, four-star current ability, and he has come to us from Bologna. Another winger joins us as well. This one is Christian Sekulerak, a Swiss 19-year-old. Another amateur contract, three-star current ability. Could potentially get up to five-star potential here. He's had a recent spell at Juventus, so a good pickup for us there. A good season for the under-23s prior to joining us. Next up is probably the odd one out in this most recent bunch of transfers that we have done so far. Still got some players at the club. This is the only player who we have signed to a semi-pro contract, a part-time contract that is 
Abdullah Bamba. He is 33 years old from the Ivory Coast, but is also part Italian. So it does count as a European player. That's where we're focusing on for this recent bunch and for most of our recent transfers. Four-star current and potential ability at right backs. A little bit better than our other options there at the moment in Mafio and Radovic. So he joins the squad on a regular starter contract. And our last signing is actually an Icelandic player. So this is probably the most useful one that we've got out of this most recent bunch. And this is Bjarki Stein Bjarkason. Four-star current ability and potential can play on either wing as well as in the midfield, quite well-rounded. He is on an amateur contract, probably a player who we will tie down to a part-time contract. He has recently spent some time at Medina and Venezia in Italy, so that is a good pickup for us, bringing a player in from Italy who is of Icelandic nationality. So those are the transfers that we have done, all on freeze, not paying too many of them a wage, only that right back Bamba, so that is a good little bit of business, we're probably going to bring in a few more players as well who are currently on trial at the club, just try and strengthen the squad as we progress throughout this save, because these players are, as you would have been able to see, quite a bit better than the options we already do have at the club, or they are young and should surpass what we've got here at the club with natural growth, so that's what we're looking like transfer wise at the moment, most of those players though have not been registered for the Conference League, but before we get into the team for this game that we've got coming up, the first one of today's episode, we'll show you guys highlights of the league games that we have played since the end of yesterday's episode. First up was a home game against Keflavik, a team who are pretty sort of upper mid-table at the moment, just the one goal in this, a corner, Mikel at the near post, and that is how we got a solid 1-0 win, a game that we were slightly more dominant than Keflavik in, so pretty fair result, I think that one was a 1-0 result to start things off. And next up, it was another home game, this time against HK, and we got off to a pretty poor start in this one, a big deflection off that shot from De Costa, and HK went up 1-0 early. Luckily, at the 25-minute mark, we were awarded a penalty, and our centre-back, Andre Son, put it away, and not too long off the back of that, a long ball over the top for our young youth intake striker, Arnes, on his first senior goal, and that was the winner. With about a quarter of an hour to go in the first half, we won that game 2-1, nothing really happened. In the second half, good come from behind victory after a little bit of a rough start. And if you look at the stats, it was a pretty well-deserved victory as well. And our last game heading into today's episode in the league was an away trip to Nats, And we got off to a decent start in this game. Far post here there from Dordovic from the Spasic ball at the 13-minute mark. We did go 1-0 up. And in fact, that was the only goal in that game. A good solid result, which does mean we have won all three games since the end of yesterday's episode and what that means is obviously we are still top of the league and in fact we have a very healthy lead at the top of the league as well exactly what we were after heading into the start of our conference league qualifying campaign seven points clear of Valarat give a single point gap between them and the teams all the way down to seventh and eighth but we have a good seven point gap at the top of the table and a game in hand on the two chasing teams directly below us as well. So about halfway through the league season, we find ourselves in a very good position to potentially win this Islands deal in our first season in the top flight of Iceland. But today the focus is on the Conference League. We've got two qualifying games. We've also got a league game coming up in between, which we'll show you guys off the back of these games. That one is away at Grotta, the team who got promoted alongside us. But our team heading in, to the Conference League, we've left things very similar to how it was before we made those most recent transfers because those transfers didn't actually take place until after the registration had to be locked in. So that is why a lot of the new faces are not involved in the Conference League. It does create a situation which could actually work out for us where those new players that we do bring in will play the league games and this current crop of players who have been playing most of the league games so far this season end up playing our European games and that could mean we're able to keep players fresh. This could actually work out quite well by fluke really, but we'll see what happens. This team has been the starting 11 for us for most of this season. The only change that we have really made in terms of the bench is we have brought Bamba on as a backup right back instead of Ladovic. He's probably going to overtake Mafio at some stage, but needs to build up that match fitness and also tactical familiarity. In terms of other options, we've got Lidzon instead of Spass. It's just a little bit better rated as our second backup midfielder on the bench, but otherwise a very similar bench to the one that we do usually carry into our league games at the moment. Hopefully these guys can get 
a decent result for us in this two-legged tie against the top team in Ireland and Bohemian. The first game that we're playing of today's episode is our home league. It is away from home, though. It's in Reykjavik at the Laugardals Villa, and we will come back shortly and see how we get on in these Conference League qualifiers. Seven minutes gone, the first highlight of the first league. It's a corner. Shaw flicks it on. Svidersky with a shot somehow. Bohemian in the black. Keep that out. A great early chance. Somehow we don't score and it does remain nil all. Up to the 22 minute mark now. We are on the attack trying to put a ball towards the far post. Two leads on, but we do keep position. Looking very good in this first leg so far. Nine shots to one. Four on target to none. Hopefully we can get something on the scoreboard. All that dominance soon. Safanson with a header just over the bar, looking very dangerous, but the scoreline does remain nil all. Up to the half hour mark now, we have yet another corner. Dordovic puts this in the mixer, tries to pick out Boscolo Shio. They head it away to Bohemian, but we do get position back and look to attack a long shot there. Didn't actually catch who that was. It goes just over the bar, though, so we're creating good chances. You can see the stats there. We are very dominant, but it does remain nil all. 44 minutes gone, coming quite close to half time now. Would have liked a goal by this stage, and it is Bohemian who are in possession. If they got a goal here, it would be a bit of a dagger blow, and they would be quite buoyant going into the away leg based on the stats, I would have to say, if that is how the scoreline stayed, because so far we have definitely looked the better team in this game, and thankfully we do get the ball back at something like 10 shots to two now, so still very dominant, but there's a good ball over the top. Forced to fence on one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He chips him. That is exactly what we needed right before halftime in this home league. We do go 1-0 up. And it is no less than what we deserved as well when you see the stats at halftime. And you'll be able to tell from the highlights that you've seen as well. We've looked very good in the highlights shown so far. Just haven't quite put the ball in the back of the net. But right before halftime, we do Diaz with the long ball over the top. Stefan on chips the goalkeeper. And we go into halftime. At 1-0 up, pretty happy with how things are going. Just need a little bit more end product, I think it's fair to say, because we probably should be 2-0 up. Looking at those stats that we do have at the halftime mark. We'll make one change going into the second half. Mafio down to a yellow heart, only on a 6.8 rating, which isn't bad. But I think we'll bring Bamba onto the pitch and see if he can improve out there and get his fitness up as well. So we'll make that change. Two changes left throughout the second half, but playing quite well, hopefully. We can get a few more goals to take into the away league in the second half. 56 minutes gone here. It's a corner to Bohemian to start the second half off, and it just goes over the bar there. So that's their best chance of the game so far, but it does remain 1-0. And up to the 65-minute mark now, we're going to make a few more changes. Both of our wingers down to Red Hearts playing well. It will save them for the league and for the second league. So Dordovic can come off the Mamaj, and Paprasiki can come on for Ledson. 25 minutes to go. Still only 1-0 up. Up to the 79 minute mark now. Our second proper highlight here of the second half. It's another attacking play here for Bohemian. They have a shot. We do get to it though. We hit it back out. But they are still in position inside the final third. Livingston right on the edge of the box. Wilson puts one in. And Kelly will put it in the back of the net. And it is going to be one all with 10 minutes to play. But the referee did put his flag up for offside thankfully. Because... Boy, if we only ended up with a draw out of this game, that would have been quite disappointing. Really, we should be 2-0 up. You look at those stats. Not too sure how we haven't got two goals out of that game. So this is still right on a knife edge as we head into the away leg in Dublin. But it's a solid 1-0 win, as I said. Probably should have got two goals out of that game, I feel like. So slightly disappointed with our end product in front of goal in that game. But we will take a win. Bodes well for the second leg, I suppose, hopefully. We can play similarly as well away from home and at least get a goal in that one so they have to score two. But reasonably happy with what I saw out there despite the scoreline not quite being as good as we wanted. And we go into the second leg in Dublin with a 1-0 lead and we'll come back shortly with that second leg. Right, back for the second leg and we do actually have TV coverage for this one. It's obviously the most interesting of the first round qualifying ties. Going into the second leg, Bohemian there playing a 4-4-2. We've just made the one change to our starting lineup, Bamba, is going to start over Mafio for this one. But hopefully we can play just as well. Maybe get one more goal, because I think we deserved it after the first league and go through to the second qualifying round of the conference league. First highlight of the game here is a throw-in to Bohemian. So they're staying this game off potentially a lot better than they did 
the first leg. Nice ball over there for their winger, Malon. He forces a good save out of Badu there. A very good chance trying to beat him at the near post, but our goalkeeper pulls out a good save. And they do have the corner. Kelly gets his head on the end of that, but luckily the shot is straight at Badu. So a few good chances early there for Bohemian, but it remains 1-0 on aggregate to Volsen, as we were on the attack there around the 12 minute mark and a missed header there from Shaw, so Bohemian with another potential chance here, forces another good save out of Badu there, does Kelly, so they are all over us early in this game, the Belgian beast is going to have to live up to his nickname in the second leg by the look of it, another corner, they're going to try and find Kelly again there I think, but we do deal with it, albeit Wilson is back in possession, good start here from Bohemian, we deal with the danger, and still hold on to our 1-0 aggregate lead. And that is half time in the second leg. Just those two early good chances there for Bohemian. You look at the stats though. It's a complete turnaround from the first leg. They are all over us. So hopefully we can hold on. But certainly the tables have turned from that first leg. We're going to make the reverse substitution that we made at half time in the first leg as well. Bamba only on a 6.4 rating, so Mafio can come on for him. And we're also being Pup Brzezicki on for Ledson. He is also on a 6.4 rating, so two changes at half time means we'll only have the one substitution left for the second half. Hopefully we can put out a much better performance in the second half, though. Hold on to that one goal lead and make our way through to the second round of these Conference League qualifiers. 55 minutes gone, we have our first highlight of the game, it's a corner and Mikel gets his head on the end of that and that is potentially a massive goal, we have been under the pump all game up until now, we finally get a set piece chance, Dordovic puts this in at the near post, Mikel's there, good header across the face of goal into the bottom right corner and it is now 2-0, Volsunga on aggregate and off the back of that goal we're going to make our last substitution, Boscolo Shio down to a red heart, Musumiki can come on for him, we'll switch him and Zvodurski around, but looking a little bit more comfortable than we did for most of that first half, now that we do have that two goal cushion, with 34 minutes left of the second leg, 20 minutes left and we are down the other end this time for a Bohemian corner, it was a very dangerous one going for exactly the same option that Mikel did, that one just over the bar though, and it does remain 2-0 on aggregate, and coming up to injury time in this game, and there is a late highlight, only one minute left of added time though, so I think we are safe to make our way through to the second qualifying round of the Conference League. Not too many highlights in the second half, although here's a good chance here for Devoy blasts it wide. That pretty much sums up both home teams in the home legs of this tie, because we should have had more than a one goal lead heading into this away leg in Bohemian have been all over us today, but haven't been clinical enough with their chances. We had the one from set piece around the 55 minute mark, made the most of it, and that is why we do hold this 2-0 lead. Good interception there from Mafio from the tackle. He makes his way down the right wing, a slide tackle, and that will do it, and we get what we set out to do in the Conference League this season, making our way through past the first qualifying round and anything from here, really, for the board is just the bonus, we obviously want to go as far as we can, that was a pretty close tie that second leg, very iffy, not too sure how we won that one, but I suppose it makes up for the first leg, as I said, where we really should have had more than the one goal out of that game, and we make our way through to the second round safely, thanks to a 2-0 win on aggregate, and time to go back into the unbox, and first off we are going to have a look at the other results of the Icelandic teams from these European competitions after that first qualifying round. Hafnaf Shador did beat the Lithuanian team 4-1 on aggregate, so that's a good result over both legs there for Iceland, much like it was in our ties. The two wins in both legs are quite useful for that coefficient, and we'll keep an eye out for the other Icelandic team here as well. In fact, it was above us in Viking Reykjavik, but unfortunately, they have gone out after winning the first leg, losing the second 1-0. And unfortunately, Vaduz did get over them on penalties as well. So Viking and Reykjavik have been knocked out of the Conference League in the first qualifying round. That might actually help them out in their pursuit of us in the league. But us and Hafnaf Shador do live on. And now we'll show you guys the highlights of the league game that we did play in between those two UEFA Conference League qualifiers. This was away. At Glotto, a team who are actually doing quite decently mid-table heading into this one, but got off to a good start away from home. A fifth-minute corner leads on for our new signing at centre-back, Corbo. He gets an early goal 
on his debut to pass one nil up. Unfortunately, though, we did concede an equaliser at the 20-minute mark. Some good short passing and poor stunts on is able to slot that in the bottom left corner. And that is how things stayed. So we do drop points in that game against Glotta, but they were tough opposition for us in the second tier last season away from home. Not too bad of a result, even though stats-wise we probably should have got a little bit more out of that game. So what that means for the league table going in to the end of today's episode, we only now hold a five-point gap at the top of the table, but do still have that game in hand. So that could expand back out to eight points. They're still in a very good position at the halfway point throughout our league season. In terms of what we've got coming up in tomorrow's episode, when once again, we will be focusing on the UEFA Conference League. We are going to be taking on the team who we took on in our save with Tottenham earlier in the beta this year. We're going to be taking on Omanoia. So that's going to be an interesting task for us against the Cyprus team. They are in a non-playable league, so that could actually end up working out quite well for us, potentially. Not too sure. We'll see how it works. But yeah, no manager in game and no league in game. So that's going to be quite an interesting tie there against the team from Cyprus. That could actually be a little bit more winnable than it could have worked out if we drew another team at that stage of the competition. But we'll see how we get on anything past this stage and the Conference League qualifiers is a little bit of a bonus. So we've got both legs of that tie coming up in the next episode. There might not actually be an episode tomorrow. I'll give you guys early warning. I've got a little bit of a function where I need to collect some syndicate money from the local pub, and I do not want that going on the bar. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow night. So there might be an episode coming out tomorrow. If it hasn't, it means that I haven't quite finished editing it out in time. So apologies for that. But I should have a little bit more time over this upcoming weekend to bring out a few more episodes anyway, so I'll make up for that over this upcoming weekend if there is no episode coming out tomorrow, but do be prepared. It, there might not be one. It depends how much time I do get before I need to go off to this meeting to collect my money from the local pub tomorrow night. So yeah, I'll try and get an episode out tomorrow, but if I don't, that is the reason why. But next episode, second qualifying round, I'm annoyed. over two legs. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until the next time I see you for this Omanoia double header as we try and make our way a little bit closer to the group stages of the Conference League. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.